Okay, let's go ahead and simplify the algebraic expression. And if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you're absolutely going to need to know how to do this. And what this involves is understanding the rules and properties of working with powers and exponents in algebra. And we have a good uh, variety of these um, uh, uh, different applications of these rules in this problem. So this problem is, I would say, medium level in terms of difficulty, certainly not overly difficult, but maybe not so basic. But again, uh, something that you should be able to do if you are taking any sort of algebra course. So if you want to go ahead and uh, try this problem, uh, put your answer the best you can into the comment section. Uh, it's kind of difficult because you are typing in uh, powers and exponents, which is not so easy to type in. But if you want to try to do that or put any other comment, that would be appreciated. But I'm going to show you the answer to this in just one second. And then I'm going to go through this step by step and uh, really uh, show you, um, you know, what you need to know in terms of how to manage a problem like this. Okay, this problem is full of all sorts of opportunities to make mistakes. But uh, again, I'm going to get to all this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics. And I'm especially speaking to those of you uh, that think you're bad at math, or maybe you're like, ah, oh, just not that good, or I always struggle in math. Well, that doesn't have to be the case. What you need is great math instruction, clear understandable and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. It will help you out big time. Also, if you happen to be uh, studying for some sort of test with uh, mathematics on it, like a math section, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, maybe a nursing school uh, entrance exam, teacher certification exam, things like that. I have a ton of test prep, uh, test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my homeschool program for middle and high school mathematics. If you need a pair of uh, math notes, well, I'm going to leave links to my notes in the description of this video, but you need to learn how to take your own awesome math notes. This is really critical for your ability to improve and learn mathematics. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as this helps me out. Okay, so I'm going to show you the answer here in just one second. But before we go any further, I just want to talk about the title of this video. So simplify the algebraic expression. So in mathematics, when you have something like this, we call this an expression. If I put an equal sign like that and then put a number, now we have an equation. Okay, so this would be an, uh, an equation, a certain type of an equation. But without an equation, and we just have something here, we're just expressing something. So when you hear that word expression, that's what we're talking about. And of course, uh, we have algebra going on here. So this may be, uh, may be referred to as an algebraic expression, variable expression. There's different kind of uh, 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 ways to describe this. But it's certainly, I want you to understand the difference between an expression and an equation. And then this right here, simplify, just means, hey, let's make this as simple as possible. Rewrite this in a, uh, a way that's equivalent, but much uh, easier and simpler than this way. And we can get to this easier way by using these various properties and rules, okay? All right, so I uh, just wanted to make sure that was clear, but let's go ahead and show you the answer right now. And there you go. The answer to this problem is 48x to the ninth, y to the seventh. So if you got this, well, that's pretty good. Okay, matter of fact, that's very good. Good enough, definitely, to get yourself a nice little happy face and A++. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you 110% and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job. Okay, that's very, very good. Now, I will make a comment here. Uh, uh, here's the problem. Here's the answer. There's any number of different paths you can um, take to get to this answer. In other words... Uh, when you're working with uh, rules of uh, properties of exponents and powers and whatnot, so let's say here's the problem, here's the answer. Uh, again, there's uh, all the different sorts of paths that you can take. Okay, there, it's really kind of up to you as long as you're taking a step 
that is a proper step, okay, a justifiable, correct step, you can get to the final answer, okay? You should arrive at the final answer. So if you, when I show you my work, if you're like, oh, I was going this way, well, this way, you know, let's say I'm doing the problem this way and you're you're kind of going this way. That's This is fine, okay? As long as you're taking the correct step and you arrive here. But, you know, with experience, when you're doing these problems, you'll learn how to take the most efficient step to get to the correct answer. But anyways, I want to make that comment because, uh, you know, uh, the way students do these problems, can there can be variation, and that's perfectly fine. But anyways, let's go ahead and see what I have uh, uh, did here. And don't worry, there'll be enough... Um, things that we will have done in common. All right, so here we go. We have a fraction. We got this big numerator down here. We got this uh, denominator. So the best thing to do is just to work on uh, kind of simplifying this numerator. Let's clean this up, and then we'll kind of clean this up, and then we'll clean the entire thing up. So that's kind of the game plan. We're going to take it one thing at a time. And the first thing I'm going to do is focus in on this part of this expression right here. Okay, so we have uh, 2. Now, what is this right here? This is actually 2 to the first power, okay? So when you see a number like, let's say, 5, and you want to think of this as a power, it's, well, it's really 5 to the first. We don't write a little 1 up there, but it's good to write uh, a little exponent to know there's an exponent here because I'm going to show you this in a second. So this is 2 or 2 to the first, x squared, y to, uh, cubed. So I need to know what's the situation when I have a power. I'm taking... Uh, an internal power to an outside power. Well, this uh, is the rule we need to know. a to the m to the n is equal to a to the m times n. In other words, if I have 2 cubed to the fourth and I have uh, an inside exponent and outside exponent, just like this, just simply multiply this, that's 2 to the twelfth. Okay. But in this case, this 2 is going to get distributed to all these exponents. We have to multiply that 2 to everything here. So this is going to be 2 to the first times 2. So it's 2 times 1. Okay, and I'm going to show you my answer right here. So we're going to get 2 squared, right? 1 times 2 is 2. And then this 2 times that 2 is 4. So that's going to be x to the fourth. And then y times 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, so this is my first step right there that I'm going to take. And notice I'm not doing a bunch of steps at once. I'm kind of just doing this step by step by step, and you should do the same thing as well. Don't try to you know, do multiple steps. You can take a few more additional steps with this problem, but I would not take more than, uh, let's say, two steps per every line of math you write. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. And looking at this, I'm saying, all right, I have 2 squared, x to the fourth, y to the sixth times this expression right here. So what am I going to do next? Well, what am I going to do next? That was my question to myself. Well, I'm going to go ahead and clear this up. This 2 squared is what? Well, that's the number 4. So let's write that there. So this is 4 times x to the 4th, y to the 6th. So we'll write that like this. And then I'm looking at this expression. I'm still focusing on the numerator right now. I have 3 times x to the 4th, and I have y to the 0. Okay, so let's go ahead and address this right now because this is super easy. What is y to the 0? Well, you can see I have my answer here. It is 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. I don't care what it is. It could be z to the 0 power. It can be x squared plus uh, 9. All of that to the 0 power still equal to 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Hopefully you recognize that. So let's go ahead and put that in right here. And so we're just cleaning up our numerator, this part of this fraction and uh, getting it as simple as we can, and then we'll go ahead and start involving uh, the denominator. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take the next step here, okay? And let me uh, put my work down uh, right here. Okay, so now let's uh, think to ourselves, what's going on in the numerator? Well, we uh, this is just one big product, okay? We have 4 times x to the 4th times y to the 6th times 3 times y to the 4th times this 1. So how are we going to deal with this? Well, let's go ahead and multiply numbers by numbers. So 4 times 3 is 12. And now we have to decide what are we going to do with these variables? Well, you need to know a property of exponents, and it goes like this. a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. So when you have two powers, let's say I have x cubed, and I'm multiplying two powers, let's say x to the 7th, 
and the bases are the same. That's the bottom numbers right here, okay? When these bases are the same and we're multiplying powers, we add the exponent. So this is x to the 3 plus 7 or 10. So we can see here, I'm, I'm going to multiply this x and this x. You know, I can kind of rewrite this so they're together. If I wanted to like, move this and rewrite this so it's x to the fourth times x to the fourth. But you need to be looking for powers here with the same base. Do you have any? Oh, yes, we do. So x to the fourth times x to the fourth. I multiply these together. I need to add the exponents. Okay, So that would be x to the eighth. And then here I just have a y to the sixth all by itself times 1. So we don't need to write that 1. 1 is always a factor of anything. Okay, so... Our numerator is looking pretty good. Let's start talking about the denominator. So the denominator, we have uh, 2 squared x to the what? Well, it's going to be x to the first, y to the first. And I'm thinking of these variables in, uh, in terms of um, putting their exponent up here because I have this outside exponent. I know I'm going to have to multiply that negative 1 to all these uh, inside exponents. So let's go ahead and do that now. This would be negative 1 times that 2. That gives me 2 to the negative 2 power. And then uh, negative 1 times that 1 is x to the negative 1. And then negative 1 times this y to the first is y to the negative 1 power. Okay, now I will say right in here, negative powers, uh, things with negative exponents, uh, tend to confuse students. Okay, this is where students can do pretty good up to this part. And then a lot of students will start getting a little bit angry. And they'll be like, oh, geez, this problem is going pretty good. But now I'm going to have to deal with this stuff. Well, let me go ahead and show you an easy way to deal with um, powers with negative exponents. But again, you know, this problem requires several steps, and we're just controlling the problem one thing at a time. And let's go ahead and talk again about how to deal with this situation down here. Okay, so what do we do with this 2 to the negative 2, x to the negative 1, y to the negative 1? Well, there is a rule, okay, another rule of uh, powers and exponents. It's this, uh, a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. So this is the rule that you're given, but effectively what this rule means is this. You can take this power right here, let's say 2 to the negative 2, and I'm like, you know, I don't want to, I want to get rid of that negative uh, sign, okay? Well, the way to get rid of a negative sign is just to put this whole power on the opposite side of the fraction bar, okay? So in other words, I'm going to take this thing and move it upstairs up into where the numer numerator is at, and it becomes positive, okay? So 2 to the negative 2, if I just move it upstairs, it becomes positive, that exponent, okay? Well, I could do the same thing with this x to the negative 1, move it upstairs, it becomes positive, and this y to the negative 1, move it upstairs, it becomes positive. So now I just move this entire expression or this entire uh, denominator upstairs, and all the exponents become positive. Now I'm going to multiply this by what was already in the numerator, which is uh, what we already simplified, okay? And then all that's remaining down there is 1. But let me make sure you understand this. Let's say I have x to the negative 2 and y to the negative 3, okay? So let's say I want to write this in a way where I, I, you don't want to you know, have negative exponents, fine. You can just re-put this, uh, whatever you have with the negative exponent, put on the opposite side of the fraction bar. So I'll put this down here. This becomes positive, okay? And y to negative 3, I'm like, okay, I want to write this in terms of a positive exponent. Just move it upstairs. That's y cubed, okay? So that's the most um, uh, effective way to deal with negative exponents. Now, you could do some subtraction, of um, of basis. So some of you were thinking, well, isn't this division? Oh, no, yeah, not sub uh, subtraction of exponents. You might be thinking in terms of this rule, a to the m divided by a to the n, and that's equal to a to the m minus n. In other words, here it's like, well, we can divide right here. And that's true too. So if you took this route, okay, and you, uh, you div um, looked at this as division, that's perfectly fine. Again, there's multiple different paths you can take to get the right answer. I'm just showing you uh, what I think is the most effective way. But, you know, really, it doesn't really make uh, too much of a difference uh, because you're going to be using all these rules. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and clean this up. And let's go and do that right now. So here we have 2 uh, to the second power. Of course, that's going to be 4, y to the first, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, x to the first times y to the first. We can write it as xy. Then we had our 12, and x to the eighth, a y to the sixth right there. Uh, 
So let's go ahead and multiply numbers times num uh, numbers. So that's 4 times 12. That's 48. And then here I have an x, or x to the first, and y to the eighth. That's multiplication. That gives me x, I'm sorry, x to the first and uh, x to the eighth. Now I want to make sure I don't misspeak because there's a lot going on. I know I'm speaking a lot here, so I don't want to... Uh, you know, confuse anybody. So x to the first times x to the eighth, that'll be uh, x to the ninth power. Again, we add the exponents, and then we have y to the first right here, and y to the sixth, that, that'll give us a y to the seventh. And there is our final answer. Again, all sorts of ways we can take to get to the uh, uh, final answer. So your teacher shouldn't, you know, knock any points off, uh, you know, from your work. Uh, being that you got the right answer, but you took different steps. What you want to do is practice working with um, powers and exponents and simplifying these expressions. And over time, you'll kind of learn the most efficient uh, routes because there are ways you can take that or like the long path. And, uh, you know, that starts off, you know, uh, um, for, you know, like newer students and whatnot. But as you get better um, at this, you'll start, you know, looking at or just kind of sensing what is the most direct path. But you absolutely need to know how to work with powers and exponents. And if you want more practice on this, well, let me go ahead and give you a couple suggestions. I teach this uh, thoroughly in all my algebra courses. I actually, well, algebra courses to include pre-algebra, but I would probably recommend uh, like Algebra 1, Algebra 2 course, my, my Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 courses of which you can find at my Math Help program. But I do have a lot of additional videos on my YouTube channel on uh, this topic. But if this particular video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.